Imagine this. Someone fills out a contact form and instantly gets sent to a landing page that says, Welcome, Kevin, from Malta. Or someone clicks a feedback link in an email and they're taken to a totally different page, depending on whether they loved your product or hated it. There's no backend, there's no database, it's just an A10, a webhook, and a bit of HTML magic. In this video, I'll show you how to build personalized landing pages using an A10's response with HTML function. And this is a banger. So let's get started with a smart contact form routing option. In this situation, we have a contact form that tailors the landing page based on what the user submits. And if we look at this, what it looks like is we have a contact form right here and I made it very simple. So there's a contact form which says contact us, fill in the below. There's a full name, location, industry, and budget. Very simple form that I created using ChatGPT that is essentially waiting for the user to fill in those specific forms and then sends the data to this N810 webhook. So I have my webhook right there. And yeah, that's pretty much what is happening on the backend right here. If I go here and activate this webhook so we can see what is actually happening, let me just deactivate this, which I'll get to in a second. And I'm just going to connect this to the webhook response. So I'll show you what is happening once that comes in. If I fill this in and I fill in my, my name, Kevin, let's say Malta, industry is AI and automation, and let's say that the budget is whatever, one, two, three, one, two, three, and I hit submit, I get this customized landing page. Welcome, Kevin, location, Malta, industry, AI, automation, budget, one, two, three, one, two, three. So nothing to write home about yet, but all this is happening on the same page. So I'm still on my like local um, running this on my local hard drive. There aren't any redirects. There aren't any databases. It's just happening immediately as a response from an A10 right here. So this is getting the data right here and it's responding back to the webhook. But let's take this a step further and make it a bit more interesting. So now, instead of replying with just this basic information right here, we want to provide something that is a bit more specific. So Let's go back here. Let's test the workflow. So this is waiting for a trigger event. And let's just reply or try this one more time. Let's put in John. Let's put in the location as United States. Let's say John is in the dog training industry. And let's say that the budget is whatever, random number there. Hit submit. And in a few seconds, if this works well, you see that again on the same page, we get a customized landing page for John, which says, hello, John, we received a request from our contact us page and wanted to personally thank you for considering us for your project. We're thrilled to have the opportunity to work with someone from the US and excited to learn more about your budget of $1.2 million. We'll be in touch soon to discuss next steps. In the meantime, don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or concerns. And uh, obviously you can fill in your company name right there. This is all again happening through an A10. There's nothing else involved. There's a webhook. There's a basic LLM chain, which I'll show you in a second. And there is this response to the webhook. So what is actually happening in the backend? The webhook is just a webhook that is waiting for some information to come in, right? The key thing is this right here, which is this using respond to webhook node. So there's this node in an ATM, which is called respond to webhook. And over here, there's the option to respond with content type being HTML. Also, you can send a specific response body. So in this case, I'm just sending over the response from the large language model output. In this case, I am connected to Mistral that is sending that response back to the user based on the inputs that came in from the user and through the webhook right here. So over there, this is using all that information to process it through the Mistral large language model. And this is the system prompt. So I have a create a quick customized landing page for the user based on the, I don't know what I was trying to say here, based on this information on our contact us page. Just say that we'll get back to them soon, but ensure it's fully personalized towards what they said. Output in HTML. So with this simple three node workflow, I get the data from the user. I craft a response right here and I respond back to the user 
using the respond to a hook node. So the user gets a customized landing page, which is ideal for them because it's not a generic we'll get in touch soon. It's something that's created for them in that moment that they get right there and then without us having to actually create an additional page. It's all returned back to the user in real time. So this is very interesting. But let's just take it a step further and have a look at this email. So imagine that you are selling a product, which let's say is called Glowify Touch-Up Kit. And you get, or the end user gets this email. We hope you're loving our recent, your recent purchase. We would really appreciate it if you could take two seconds to tell us what you think. Just click one of the buttons below. And if I just turn this on, this is what the user would get. So this is now active and listening for incoming information. If the user clicks, I love it, they get sent to this page. Thanks for the love. We're thrilled to hear you're enjoying your product. Would you mind taking 30 seconds to leave a public review? So that's one option. At the same time, the user might also decide to choose I hate it. And in that case, he receives this or he gets sent to this page. Which says, sorry to hear that. We'd love to learn what went wrong. Would you mind telling us more? And there is an email our team button. So again, all this I'm not creating separate landing pages. It's all being done through an A10. So if I go here, I can show you what is happening. So first we have the webhook that is again listening to incoming information. Since this is being received through an email, through a normal, normal a, a, a href type of tag, this is now a get method because that is the default, the, the thing that works best. Then we have an if node right here which is just saying if the user's opinion is equal to love, then let's go to, or let's go down this path, which is respond to webhook with the page that is being returned, being the so glad you love that page. Alternatively, if the response or if the answer here is false, so the answer is not equal to love, then let's go down this route, which is where we take the user to a page which says, we're sorry, you didn't love it. So using N810 and its webhook ability, its respond to webhook ability, and a simple if node, we can send the user to different pages based on the choice that they make. In this case, through an email that we send. So these buttons both point to the same webhook URL, it's just the route that the user gets sent down on, and the information that they get back is different based on what they choose. and one final thing I wanted to mention is to send this email is a very simple process as well because we just have a, G a simple Gmail node which I created again this code using ChatGPT and it just says I mean would love your feedback as the title we hope you're loving your recent purchase and then we have the two button options so we have this which sends the parameter opinion equals love and this sends the parameter opinion equals hate and just like that the user can click either of the buttons and then gets redirected either up this path or down to the other path over here. So I just wanted to make a quick video about NA stands webhook node and the respond to webhook node as well, because I think it's very powerful and not many people are speaking about this. And I think you shouldn't be sleeping on this because it's a very simple way to create different paths, to create a customized experience for the user and to ensure that you give them something that feels personalized from the first moment that they come into contact with your business. So that is the whole point of this type of automation. What I'll also say is that the setup is insanely flexible. So you can use it for surveys, for onboarding, for upsells, whatever. And if you want to get the full blueprint for, for this and more help with this these things, there are two things that you can do. Number one, if you want more one-to-one -one help, one-to-one -one coaching, check out the link in the description. And if you want to get the blueprints, there's also the link in the description. So you can get the, you can get access to this blueprint and all the other blueprints from my previous YouTube videos. So check out the links below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. And I'll speak to you soon.